and uh, this is where the heart is uh, in this interview because he talks about how he you know became a success from being an immigrant from South Africa to being student in the United States and I really like it thousand dollars in, in travelers checks back when travelers checks were a thing you know um in canadian dollars yeah uh, I, <laughs> I landed in montreal um i have some family in canada uh, and my mom's uncle lived in montreal but like we didn't we didn't notice the phone number so i, I landed in montreal and my mom says i just got a letter back from my uncle he's in minnesota or something <laughs> so i'm like oh, okay i don't know what to do now like just stayed in a youth hostel and like bought a bus ticket across canada I worked at various like odd jobs and stuff. Whoa. Worked on my on my mom's cousin's farm, weed farm in Saskatchewan for six weeks. <laughs> That's where I had my 18th birthday actually. I worked in a lumber mill, I changed with logs, and did various odd jobs. Um, and uh, and then went to college in, in Canada for a couple of years. I paid my own way through college, by the way. So but in really? Canada, it's like easier because the college is more subsidized, um, and I was a Canadian citizen through my mom. So and I got some scholarships and loans and stuff, and, and then um, I applied to the University of Pennsylvania, and uh, didn't think I'd be able to go because um, tuition is really high. But they they gave me a scholarship and loans and stuff, so I was able to go there. Um, and I graduated with like, about a hundred thousand dollars in student debt. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Five hundred thousand dollars? I didn't know that. Okay, so. Basically, and this is what actually pisses me off because Liz Warren, the Pocahontas, the fraudster who basically called him a freeloader, okay, uh, Liz Warren was freeloading when ever since she was student. I think she was uh, a law student. She graduated law in uh, Rutgers University in New Jersey. It's uh, basically a um, state university. In New Jersey and uh, this guy was work working odd jobs as he said and Liz Warren was like freeloading freeloading for pretending and lying to be a Native American when she's not she's the one of the whitest women in America and not only that so she, he mentioned uh, about his $500,000 student loan and um, one of the most liberal uh, lunatics in American Congress is AOC Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez who demanded that the American taxpayers pay her 17,000 student loan I mean I think um, AOC graduated economics at uh, if I'm mistaken Boston University and uh, she ended up a bartender be before uh, getting so lucky defeating, you know, an old ally and pal of Nancy Pelosi in Congress uh, via uh, Democratic primary in New York. And uh, a bartender, after graduating um, economics at one of the most expensive schools in, in America, <laughs> And um, now AOC is, is, is like playing to be a working cl class, you know, woman when she's nothing like a working class woman. I mean, she, she came or she's, she's a resident of one of the, well, probably wealthiest districts in New York, in Bronx, okay? But I don't know how she got that position because Th that district in New York is where you know you can have a cup of coffee run for for Congress and, and um, as part of the Democrat ticket, and that cup of coffee is going to win against a Republican because that's how stupid the voters of that district district are. They're gonna vote for anyone as long as that person or thing is a Democrat. And now they're suffering because of AOC's stupidity. So we've heard last year, I think, or two years ago, that AOC block, you know, Amazon from from establishing its headquarter in New York that could, that could have given 
thousands of jobs to New Yorkers or Bronx residents, the poor, you know, residents in that district. But, you know, that's because of wokeism. And um, there's going to be grass studies at Stanford and decided to put that on hold uh, to try start starting an internet company. Um, I actually, I tried to get a job at Netscape. Um, Ooh. But they didn't. That's okay. I'd send my resume and get a response. <laughs> so I was like, it's a good okay, thing. I guess I, sh- I can't get a job at the only if you're He got rejected. And Netscape is one of the earliest browsers, you know, if for the for the older older millennials, they probably know what you know Netscape is. But I mean, that's a, a rejection can be a good thing. You know, it's like a blessing in disguise, and that really happened so to to Elon so Musk. Like, I guess I want to do something there, and I got to start my own company. Uh, and I ended up writing the first. Uh, Maps and directions on the internet. I wrote it personally. Uh, maps, directions, yellow pages, white pages. Um, on a puny computer, like with hardly any. So it had, you had to be like the code had to be super tight. Um, I even have some patents on like maps and directions and white, yellow pages and white pages and stuff um, from from ages ago. They were they're lapsed now, but that that company ended up getting bought by by Compaq for about three hundred million dollars. I owned seven percent of the company, so I got like twenty million dollars from that. Put most of it into uh, X.com, which merged with Confinity to create PayPal. And then I got about $180 million from that. And I put all of that into SpaceX, Tesla, and, and SolarCity. Uh, I just basically kept, you know, kept all the chips on the table. I just like, let's play another round. But most people take their chips off the table, or at least some of their chips. And, uh, and then SpaceX and Tesla ended up being valuable. and. That's where I'm. But, but the, the the reason for SpaceX and Tesla is, you know, Tesla. Like you said, like what is what is the how would you assess the historical good of Tesla? I'd say it's the degree which Tesla accelerated sustainable energy. And I, I've been interested in, in electric cars for a long time. Um, since maybe high school, or certainly early college. My original interest in electric vehicles was not so much due to environmental concerns, but rather from the. Uh, Concern that uh, we'd run out of oil uh, eventually. Just imagine if um, he gave all this money, according to the Democrats and liberals in Twitter, that they they approve of ninety percent taxation, and they don't even define what that tax is. Is that an income tax or a capital gains tax? So they basically refer to it as, you know, just simply tax. So whatever you earn regardless of its source, whether it came from your income or from your salary as an employee or or from selling stocks or property, you must be taxed 90%. And that's what a lot of liberals and Democrats are you know, saying on Twitter. Imagine if he gave 90% of that $180 million that he got from, he got from uh, uh, PayPal, right? What would have happened that? He would not have put up two of the greatest, you know, companies uh, in modern America, SpaceX and Tesla, and um, the, the government would have just, you know, spent that money on, on stupid research, you know, <laughs> and that's actually, you know, Amer- American government in Congress has been, have been uh, spending millions of dollars on stupid research. I think you need to Google that, you know, you know, it's, it's good that he was able to keep Probably 50% of that money, you know, because the capital gains tax in America is, uh, I'm not really familiar, but in the Philippines, it's 15%, which is, I think, a 6% in the Philippines, and I think 15% in America, but it actually depends um, in each state, because America is a federal government, so, but you can correct me on that. Uh, but basically, taxation in America is quite high, despite being one of the most capitalist uh, econ- economies in the world today. And uh, or become extremely scarce and expensive, and then uh, civilization would collapse because we can drive cars or you know burn power plants and stuff. So, so we need some form of sustainable energy generation and consumption, or, or civilization is going to collapse. So that was my original interest in electric vehicles and solar energy, and and then I, th- I do think there's. Um, some risk of uh, 
negatively affecting the climate. Uh, you know, as, as you increase the CO2 concentration in the oceans and atmosphere, this you increase the risk of something uh, going wrong. Um, I, I, I am I'm not like in the camp of of, of the global warming. Uh, global warming. Uh, I like. Yeah, that's what I would like to hear from him because, yeah, I mean, a lot of liberals are right in saying that um, Tesla and um, his companies are getting subsidies from the federal government. But, you know, I mean, he, he doesn't need those money, actually. He doesn't need those money. Um, and because of that, that's being used as a permission for, for the government to regulate him and to tax him at 90%, right? I mean, he doesn't need government money. He doesn't need government money. He, you know, uh, Tesla can, can definitely operate without getting subsidies from the government. But the thing is, the problem is, American politicians, mostly Democrats like Liz Warren, are the ones giving this money, forcing... You know, the private companies like Tesla and other, other companies, they're forcing them to get money. I mean, many, you know, um, many companies are lobbying for these subsidies, but I don't think, you know, uh, Elon Musk needs this money coming from the government or the subsidies. I, you know, I, I think, like, I don't think we're, like, um, screwed because of, like, the, the current past million of CO2 in the ocean's atmosphere. I, I think that this is actually not, not a terrible level. However, um, the, there's so much inertia uh, in the direction of mining and burning hydrocarbons that uh, you know, the, 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 the world is so overwhelmingly dependent on mining and burning hydrocarbons. Um, so, you know, if, if this continues and you start really driving up the, the CO2 in the ocean's atmosphere, then there's, there's this increased risk uh, of uh, accelerating climate change, basically warming up the oceans and, um, and raising the sea level. So, Well, this is, I actually disagree with him on this matter. You know, of course, he's a billionaire, but, you know, um, climate change has been ongoing for billions of years. And uh, notice the, the change of the term from the term global warming to climate change because, you know, it's all scam, actually. We, I mean, since when did man invent, invent cars that emitted and or discovered fossil fuels for example it's actually over the past hundred years only and there were there were you know global warming in the, in the past for example there was this medieval uh, global warming period and uh, a lot a lot of a lot of global warming periods in the past prior to the discovery by man of the you know fossil fuels the thing about the the climate alarmists is that uh they are tyrants okay they would like to shut down the debate and l label anyone who disagrees with them as as a uh, lunatic for example uh when in fact the only way to combat global warming if it were real and it's being caused by humans in that in that other um, aspects like the sun and the uh, ocean cycles, etc. Then the only way for us to combat uh, global warming is allow companies, allow pri the private sector to come up with the solution and not shut down debate and, you know, tax people, tax industries, etc. When you know many countries like China and India do not abide by the Kyoto Protocol, for example, that's being trumpeted by by the creepy Peter Joe Biden administration, but that's going to be for another so, story. Like, like, just, I think that's probably just not a wise risk to take, since we will in, in any case uh, have to transition to sustainable energy long term because we will eventually run out of oil and coal to mine it. Uh, then why run the experiment to see if you know to see if something bad will happen with a, a high CO two concentration in the ocean atmosphere, like? Is a pointless experiment. Like we know, we have to get to some uh, sustainable energy economy 
it's tautological. Like, so I think there's, we should try to get there sooner so as not to run the risk of climate change. It would not, it, climate change would not be catastrophic to civil civilization, but it would be very disruptive. Humans love living right on the ocean. So it's like almost like a like a thermometer. It's like it's like if, if we're, we're living right on the beach. Okay, so uh, this is like so even small changes in the sea level, in sea level will put a lot of houses underwater. Little- yeah, I mean Obama. Obama has a multi-million dollar mansion, a beachfront mansion, and many other you know liberal politicians like Pelosi and others. So, I mean, the global warming seems not a threat to America's billionaires and millionaires, especially those who've been uh, selling the climate change agenda, the taxation, etc., right? So that's basically what he's talking about here. We're just, we're just inherently created civilization that's highly sensitive to changes in temperature. A lot of politicians who are alarmist about this stuff yeah. buy homes right on the water, don't they? <laughs> That's exactly the yeah, case. I, 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 I'm, I'm not sort of um, beachfront like properties. The oil and gas industry. Bernie Sanders. Um, I, think, I think the the reality is like if uh, if we don't have oil and gas right now, civilization would collapse uh, and everyone will be starving. 